Okay. So um, yeah, but we're really happy to have Jada Branch come. She was very involved with the creation of this Douglas, Douglas Park golf course. And she's also the community programs lead in Lincoln Park Zoo. And um, as part of her role, she facilitates nature themed product projects in North Lawndale, including Douglas 18. So she's gonna tell us about uh, creating that mini golf course for all ages that inspires conservation through play. And also she's gonna talk about how the community was involved uh, along the way. Uh, so thank you so much, Jada. Thank you. Yes, thank you all so much for having me. I'm super excited to just talk more about Douglas 18, introduce the project to you all, then also, you know, hopefully inspire you all to just go out there and play a round or two. Yeah. <laughs> so I will share my screen. I love, I do presentations for Douglas 18. I should say all the time, but a lot. <laughs> so Douglas 18. So what is Douglas 18? So I'll start by just explaining what the program is or what the project is. And so it's a collaboration between pretty much a lot of stakeholders from Lawndale, so North Lawndale and even South Lawndale. So between Firehouse Community Arts Center, Open Architecture Chicago, Chicago Park District, of course, because it's Douglas Park. So we definitely needed the Park District's permission to be there. Um, Lincoln Park Zoo. So that's, I work with, uh, as Judy was saying, I work with Lincoln Park Zoo. That is my job. I'm Hayman Cross III, who is a teaching artist, UIC School of Architecture, Professor David Brown, and various North Lawndale youth. And the project is also supported by LL Bean, the Trust for Public Land, Site Design, School of the Art Institute at Home and Square, and Alderman Michael Scott Jr. and the North Lawndale Co Community Coordinating Council. Then also another one of our teaching artists, a few more, because I think their names, for some reason got left off here, but also Eric Hotchkiss, who is a teaching artist, and he does a lot of, um, he does a lot of art on the south side of Chicago, as well as Ife Williams, who works with them a lot during their first phase of the program. And I'll go over more of like about the different phases as I talk more, but um, pretty much over the last, well, throughout three years, partners worked together to de redesign the miniature golf course at Douglas Park with the theme of bird conservation. So before there was always this, there was this mini golf course out there where nobody was using it. So it was just kind of there. And then even before that it used to be a beach, but they built a golf course or like the mini golf course. And then, like I said, it's just kind of there. No one was using it. So we kind of had this idea with Heyman Cross who said, hey, we have this, um, this golf course here. And so we just talked about how we can merge art and science, which is really why this project is just an amazing uh, merge of how art and science connect. And so we talked about how this project can support bird conservation because Douglas Park is home to over 200 species of birds, which you all probably already know that. <laughs> and so teens and young adults from the west side of Chicago were employed to learn design, placemaking, and architectural skills, along with education and skills related to environment and conservation. And so in summer of 2019, student designs were handed off to site design. And then their site design is a landscape architecture company, and they have been, they professionalized the designs over the course of the last year. Or that was back in 2020. And then in 2021, fabrication and installation of the obstacles were completed and the grand opening. So the very grand, the first day of the grand um, of the golf course was August 7, 2021. So last summer, mm -hmm. it was a great time. So it's definitely open. Well, closed um, for obviously for like winter. It was too cold to play, but it's open officially. We're not open this season, but it opened officially in August 7th. And so now I'll go over like the different phases because like I said, it was about, it took us about three years. So from 2018 to 2021, it took us three years to really start from scratch to what it is now. So during the first phase, which is the summer of 2018, what we did was we had to just introduce students to what the project was and also like what birds were, what art was, because what we realized was a lot of the students were like, I'm not an artist. They didn't really care for birds, which is fair. Like a lot of the students uh, kind of called it rats of the skies. You know, they, not, not a lot of them really cared for birds. So we really just took the time to explain like what birds were. So how could you know if something was a bird? Why are birds cool? Sorry, one second. Let me let the phone ring. Mm -hmm. So we went birding on that first June 26th. Um, well, it wasn't the first day, but that was when the, within the first week when the program started. 
And then we also did various field trips. So that actually, this first bird outing, this was at the golf course. This is what it originally looks like. And so a lot of them were even surprised. Like a lot of the students were surprised that there was a golf course out there because a lot of them hadn't even been through Douglas Park yet. And so then we also took them to the birdhouse at Lincoln Park Zoo because we figured, hey, we have birds at the zoo. So what a great time to just take them to the zoo. So they got to go a lot of, to a lot of the behind the scenes tours. So being able to see some of the eggshells. Then we also did like a nature boardwalk tour. So just learning more. So even just trying to expand more about birds, but a lot of them weren't really comfortable outside. So we talked more about what urban wildlife was. So besides birds, also talking about um, coyotes, and things like that. So, and bats, obviously. So right here, I'm holding like bat skeletons. And so they just learned more how to be comfortable outside as well this first summer. We also them, took them to La Ba Wood. So they were able to kind of explore a more woody area. I mean, Douglas Park is pretty woody already, but La Ba Woods, they were able to go there. Then also the Burnham Wildlife Corridor. So also throughout the first phase, besides learning about birds, they also learned about art. So the Burnham Wildlife Corridor is great because it has like different art sculptures within nature. So they were able to kind of come up with or think of designs that they would want to do for their own uh, holes. And then they also, so for the first phase, their deliverables, so the things that they did for the first phase, they created these prototypes and murals. So the prototypes were what they wanted their golf um, holes to look like. So there are 18 holes on the golf course. So we had about three groups and they each designed one kind of like mobile golf station. So this was one, they actually designed this. Uh, we talked about the migrations of birds. So they learned how hard it is for birds to migrate. Well, they know it's natural, but they learned like, oh, hey, cities like Chicago, they face a lot of perils when they migrate. So for this golf hole, they have like a bunch of buildings here. So they made it really hard for the ball to go through. Kind of like for birds, birds have to dodge windows. So they just really wanted the folks who were playing this golf hole to kind of feel the frustration the birds might feel trying to uh, navigate through a big city like Chicago. We also have one where they kind of were trying to replicate the um, habitat for birds. So they wanted this center like kind of planter right there to be a tree, but obviously it's they only have so much space on like a smaller area. So. We just chose a planter there because they still burst still. Obviously, they hang around a lot of plants or lot. And then they also, this one was another one that was about the habitat. So just talking about also different, they also talked about the food that the birds eat. So this one was inspired by the red-tailed hawk. So how uh, it's a bird of prey and they sometimes eat, well, not sometimes, but you know, they eat smaller animals. <laughs> And then, so like, so they were very busy that first summer and it was easier since, easier since it was summer. So they had a lot more time because they were out of school. Sure so they also made these murals. And so each mural was just about, we gave them a vague prompt of like what nature means to them. And so they made it by anything they wanted it to be. So this one was by Terion. So he drew his face with chicory plants because we talked about how a lot of the vacant lots, especially in North Lawndale, they are able to grow chicory plants that we they can actually use, like chicory plants for coffee, tea, all of that stuff. So he kind of drew what nature meant to him. Then also someone drew a yellow warbler, which I enjoyed because I love yellow birds. Well, I love all birds, but I have a special place in my heart for yellow birds. Then they also, some students took it a step further and actually made things that were people could utilize. So for example, they made this bench and so it's hard to see, but on the bench, they talk about how if you have cats, you shouldn't let them outside because cats kind of mess up the ecosystem for the birds because cats will, you know, they harm birds a lot. And then some of them also made um, back in the far corner of this, or not far corner, but kind of the middle of the field, there is a kind of like those um, picture frames you can put your face in. So people can kind of see like, oh, people can put their face in, take pictures with it. So they tried to make anything that people could um, utilize, like I said, just interact with. So that was phase one. So that was during the summer of 2018. So from about June to early August, they just worked on learning more about birds, learning more about art, learning about architecture. So we did go to UIC and visited the UIC architecture school. And so during phase two, they had this kind of general concept of what birds were. So they knew, okay, I know what birds are. So we narrowed it down. So obviously, like I said, there are over 200 species of birds that kind of call Douglas Park their home or they visit there a lot. So we narrowed it down to 24 birds. 
we let each student choose a bird that really just spoke to them that they liked. And so from that bird, the students really studied those birds. And I was the one, um, I taught them about the birds or really just those 24 birds. And I just introduced it to them that each student kind of did their own research as well about their birds. So for example, this bird here, so I wanted to worry about the American tree sparrow because I just really enjoyed how they um, are able to stay year round kind of. Um, and they just talked about how, what they were planning to do for the hole. So for this hole, hole number 18, which is actually a hole that's in production. So if you go out to the golf course, like you'll see this hole. It's not exactly like this because some things have to change. But for hole 18, they exemplified how the American tree sparrow can survive both in the summer and the winter. So they made half of the golf course kind of winter themed where it's just like bare trees. Then half of the golf course is around summer. So the trees are more plentiful. There are more, there's more food around. And so during this phase also, we had our teaching heirs, teaching artist Eric Hotchkiss and also Heyman Cross. So they were also in the first phase, but also this phase, they were just around, they're, running, they're also working the community. So they just helped them kind of come up with knowing, hey, how to design, like how should the obstacles look? How does the physics of the obstacles work? So just helping them with that. We also had someone did one about the indigo bunting and she liked it because the color was blue, which is, I understand, because I love when, um, you know, I just love when people choose birds based off their favorite color. She just really likes the color blue. She chose the indigo bunting. And then also, so in addition to these posters they made, they also made like mini. So these are like really mini, like tabletop, um, pretty much models of what they want the golf course or what they want their golf hole to look like. So this one was based off of the American Robin. So they tried to choose the orange for that American Robin color. They chose some of the food the American Robin eats, so worms. And then they also chose like, it's supposed to represent streets because American Robins, you know, they're all around Chicago. So they want to represent that. And so we printed out, pretty much is big over this big map of what the Douglas 18 course looks like at that point. And then each student kind of filled in, like I said, they made this out of clay and cardboard. And these are the 3D models. And then we also had uh, one of the teaching artists, Eric Hotchkiss, he has, he teaches a class at Home in Square. So he had one of his students kind of create a 3D printed version of those little clay models they did, which looks really great. And then, like I said, so they worked a lot. So in addition to that, because they realized that like, hey, we were doing pretty much just big projects in the community, we really wanted a lot of community input. So what we did at one point, we had a lot of our partners on the call from Douglas 18. We went and helped them like build pretty much life-size replicas of those little clay models they did. Then they did a community charrette where community members and like schools were able to come out and talk about what they liked about the golf course, what they didn't like about the golf course what was too hard, what was too easy. And so this is just a picture of us doing a lot of paper mache building. The teens were in charge, so they really enjoyed being able to tell adults what to do. They really, they talk about this day a lot. They loved this day, just instructing us on what to do, how to do it, so we can complete their vision. So this is just one of those pictures from that day where it's just a lot of schools were able to come out and just see what we've been working on. And also like I said, it was open to community members and residents to vote on like what they liked. And then, so phase three was the developmental process of the design. So we handed off these designs, so the beautiful Barn Swallow to Site Design, which once again was the architectural firm where they just kind of professionalized the designs because as you might've noticed, a lot of the students, they had like the mini models, but they didn't have a lot of like, oh, we want this specifically to be like eight by 13 or whatnot. So Site Design was able to put numbers to their models. So kind of here's a picture of the Barn Swallow which is made by Tiffany Town. And so she chose a barn swallow in there. So for this golf hole, she wanted the barn swallow's habitat to be shown. So she uh, knows that barn swallows tend to build their nest on human man-made structures. She wants to say that. So she made, so first, the first thing she did was make this little poster, then the 3D design. And then from side design, they kind of, like I said, they made a schematic of it to talk about like how big each um, obstacle should be. And then they kind of made a 3D picture of it. And then, like I said, we started, we were able to get them fabricated by new toys. And then this is before the, um, the turf grass was able to go down. And then I'll show you all a picture of how it looks after. I want to save the big reveals for later.
But so now I'll give you all like a tour of the golf course. So that was pretty much it. So that was the biggest. So that was all of that was from 2018 to about 2019, early 2020, where we worked with those um, development companies, so site design and new toys to just fabricate the obstacles, to professionalize those designs. And like that process of handing those, um, of just handing them what the students wanted to uh, the bigger companies, it took about a year. Because obviously so in 2019, when we handed off the designs, um, obviously in 2020, things had to slow down because the pandemic hit. So we had plans to originally open the golf course in 2020, but like I said, there were just a lot of setbacks, but we were able to do it. So here's a mini tour of the golf course. So the first hole is that American Robin. So as you'll see, all of the students' designs, it stayed true to the students. They were involved every step of the way. So we went to side design. So we didn't just like hand their designs to side design. We like had a meeting with side design, side design always made sure to ask the students when they had to change something. So like, for example, we had to change a lot of the obstacles because it wasn't very accessible. So like to make it more accessible, they had to move different obstacles, but the students knew about every change that was happening to their golf holes every step of the way. So this is once again, based off of the American Robin. So it was still that orange color. Here's how it looks in person. Pretty more of a um, rusty orange, just like American Robin's chest. And each golf hole also has a sign about the bird. So what I love about the golf course is that you won't just see like, oh, like it's a cool golf course. It has pretty colors. It's like got cool obstacles. You also learn more about the bird. So we have the signs of the birds. It has like the scientific name of the bird. Then it has a description of like what the golf hole, for example, represents. It also has, it's also in English and in Spanish. So we were trying to be, you know, pretty accommodating. Obviously there are more than two languages in the world, but we figured in Chicago, a lot of people speak English and then also speak Spanish. So hole one is American Robin. Then we have the Baltimore Oriole, which is another fun one. Um, this one is a little challenging. A lot of people try to like play off this ramp. If you ever go, trust me, just avoid the ramp all in all because it doesn't get you closer to the hole. Then we, uh, that's another student did one about the Dick Sissel. Then we have the Northern Cardinal. Then also the barn swallows, so this is another one. So I know I kind of showed a mini picture of how it looks before the turf went down. So this is how it looks in total. So for this one, it's interesting because a student tried to make it look like a bird's face. So it's, so when you're playing on the ground, it's kind of, it's harder to see, but when you're viewing from the top, you can kind of see it has like the beak and the eyes. And so then also she tried to make it the color of the bird. <laughs> and then the pied build grieve. So they talked about, so for this um, hole, the student was, very just moved about how pie bill greaves eat their own feathers to kind of protect their stomach. There are feathers lined in the golf course to kind of represent that. And then the downy woodpecker. So they made um, just about, you know, this one is more about how they uh, get their food. Then the American goldfinch. So this one is a little hard. So it still has the American goldfinch has like the sign about the bird, but you won't see. So for most of them, you might know, so like we actually put a picture of the bird on there. So like um, somewhere on here, you'll see like the, if you have to keep an eye out, but like you'll see pictures of uh, the barn swallow on there, like on the rock. But for the American goldfinch, there's no picture of the bird, but this one was once again, so from that very first phase, like that very first summer of 2018, this one was inspired still by the migration of the birds. So it has a few buildings based off of uh, downtown Chicago, obviously the indigo bunting then also the black crown night heron so this student was really inspired by it. we took them when we took them to the zoo we took them to um the children's area of the zoo so they noticed we had so at the zoo it's one of like the biggest populations of black crown night heron so they're just really inspired by how like the black crown night herons have those like really flat platform nests on top of the trees so they really enjoyed that aspect and then the Canada goose, so of course, you know, all of the birds, um, they were trying to choose the most popular birds in Douglas Park. So if you ever did visit Douglas Park, which I'm sure a lot of you have, of course, and also everywhere, Canada geese are just always out in Douglas Park. Uh, the red winged blackbird, another very popular bird in Douglas Park and probably in a lot of areas. <laughs> the ring billed gull. So the student was very inspired by like, you know, ring billed gulls from how they, uh, just forage for their food a lot. So they have a lot of trash around because you know you notice more, uh, you usually notice a lot of rainbow goals, mostly in parking lots or areas where like there are a lot of humans. The American crow. So this student was also inspired by how intelligent crows were. So they had 
so originally they had these um these like arches that had like toys on them because they knew that American crows tend to use tools to like either get their food or for different um, reasons. The great blue heron, so another one where they're just looking at their habitat. The Cooper's hawk, so another bird of prey. So they have like the little, well not the little, but the uh, food that they usually eat. And then the yellow warbler, so they made the turf grass yellow. The American tree sparrow, so this is whole 18, this is the final one. So this one had a few changes. So it was mostly just winter on this one. They like, there are some worms for summer because you usually see worms more in the summertime and not in the winter. But so that is the golf course. It's very fun to play. We really enjoy it. Um, it opens like again, once again, on May 7th. So that's coming up pretty soon. I feel like it always sounds so far away, but it opens May 7th officially to the public once again. I forget exactly how much it costs. Um, at the end of this presentation, I have, the social medias that you can follow to find out more about it. So this is just if you want to see people in action playing the golf course. I promise it's definitely playable. It's a little challenging because every at the beginning we actually had to talk to them about, like I said, making it a little bit easier because they did not want anyone to win at first. So it's pretty fun to play. And then you can definitely make sure you all join us. Of uh, what's once again, it opens May 7th. And then, so we have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're most active on Facebook and Instagram. So it's at the Douglas 18 on all of those websites, on all three platforms. So pretty, we try to make it an easy handle to follow for all three. So follow us to just learn more about the project. So for example, for our Facebook and Instagram, you can scroll back and just look at all the pictures that they uploaded. Um, they put a lot of effort into those social media pages. Because even so, one thing I forgot to mention is actually so during 2020, so during the pandemic, we actually hired our social media team for the golf course because we knew it was taking a while. We knew we told people that it was going to open in 2020. So we hired our social media team to just make sure that people were still excited about the project. So a group of teens, once again, from the West Side also created this Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And so they were updating it and just keeping um, the excitement about the project up. And that is actually all I have for this presentation. I know that went pretty fast, but are there any questions about it? Awesome job. It's, this, this is amazing. Um, I can't wait to visit um, Douglas Park and see this. This is inspirational for some of us um, park stewards, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd like to see something like that in my park, yeah. Yes, for sure. I had a we question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you had you show uh, pictures of college students playing it. Um, what's the age range of, of who can accomplish this course without getting too disappointed and <laughs> bursting into tears? That's a great question. So definitely... I would say it's fun for all ages. I know it's definitely a little challenging, but we definitely have um, different size, like, well, we have different size putters, so people from various heights can play, but it's not too challenging. I don't think, I've seen, I should have added more, what happens is with pictures with kids, um, you have to get like rights and stuff, parental rights. So I didn't add any, but we've had a lot of kids come out and play and they really enjoy it. I haven't seen any kids burst into tears yet, but they also probably weren't very competitive, but <laughs> definitely a lot. We have a lot of people come and visit. So I definitely think anyone, I think any age, as long as they, you know, as long as they're a little bit patient. <laughs> what are the dates that it's open? Is it is it is going to go into like October, November? And then do you, do you take part of the course down and put it away for the winter? Yeah, that's another great question. So we usually, so in the past, so this year it opened May 7th. Um, I know last year it closed, I believe it was October 30th, or I think it was October 31st. So I think Halloween was on Saturday last year. So it closes about like that last weekend in October, but only because it's getting, you know, it's more rain. Also, it's getting cold. So a lot of people, we just pretty much followed the trend of other um, outdoor golf courses in Chicago or just in general. So a lot of golf courses tend to close during the winter months because most people aren't playing. It's just too cold outside. So it'll open May 7th and then be open. 
I have to get the official day, but usually it's about the last weekend in October for folks to play. So we try to make sure that we're at least open during those key like vacation summer months. That's a great question. Are they open every day? Oh, another one. So I have to check. So last time they were open mostly on weekends and then uh, a lot of like evening hours. So I want to say they were open every day. Well, actually, I'm not going to say I think. I don't know for sure, but I do know they're open on the weekends. Uh, this, so for example, so last year was like our first year opening. So we had to toggle around with the dates a lot. Like sometimes it would be open on certain weekdays and not the other. So this year we have to uh, finalize an official schedule, but at the very least, I know it'll be open on weekends. But right now I think during weekdays they're open on like during the evenings. But I'll definitely say like get you an official schedule. Does it have lighting for evening? Obviously, I mean, I don't know that I see lighting there, but it, 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 you could play in the evenings with with uh, area lights. Yeah, so there there are some lights out there. It's not too bright, but there are like some street lights or like you know the kind of yellow lights that Chicago has. So there aren't too many. They have some bigger like stadium type of lights, so there is lighting out there. But we also definitely 100%, I forgot what time it officially closes, but like the parks all close at 11 p.m. And I think this closes before that cutoff. Again, I know you all asked about the cost information, so I'll definitely get that to you all too. I know before it was about $5 per person, but that might change this year as well. So definitely make sure you all are following that Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, because I know they'll have like the most up-to-date information about it. Do you think that there was any interest in birds that came because of the, the golf course? Like, do you have any, any evidence of that? Yes, 100%. So I'm actually really glad you asked. So like I said before, they just were not, did not really care about birds. But what we noticed is they started taking more, um, we did some evaluation. We did a lot of evaluation pieces with this. So we did from interviews to surveys to mind maps. So we found that at the very least, most students had a more interest in nature in general. So they were like, oh, you know, like I'm starting to notice more when I go outside. So mm. a lot of students before kind of said like they would just go outside to get from point A to point B. But a lot of them after doing this program, they talked about how they take a little more time just kind of observing what was happening around them. Then also personally, I know I received like a lot of texts from students just showing me pictures like, oh, is this a Baltimore Oreo? So for example, a lot of students, um, they always mistakenly, uh, they thought that American Robin was a Baltimore Oreo, which I was like, that's fair because I mean, obviously Robins are a lot bigger, but they thought based off that orange chest, they thought it was a Baltimore Oreo. And they were really excited. And then, I mean, they were still excited about the Robin, just not as much because they're used to Robins, but just knowing that they take the time to kind of like take pictures and then sending to me. So a lot of them were noticing more birds because they talked about it more like you would just hear from their conversations. They're like, oh, like I'm hearing a lot more red winged blackbirds. And they've always been around, but like a lot of students are just realizing, or they realize from this project, like before they were just able to kind of ignore the sounds. But then after this, they were just like, they started appreciating it more and just taking more note about it. So and that's a thank you for asking that because I do want to make sure that like I do, I wanted to make sure that you all knew that the students did actually take away a more kind of nature vibe from it. Thank you, Alan, for posting that, um, the cost and the times. Well, thanks so much, Jada, that I, I enjoyed that tremendously. And I know a lot of other people did too, just uh, judging from the comments. I've been curious about this for such a long time and it's really an exciting project, uh, you know, the way that you involved uh, the students and uh, put that whole team together of so many partners. Um, yeah, so just bravo. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for coming and sharing it uh, with us. We we appreciate it. So um, at this point in the program, we're going to just um, talk a little bit about some of the different projects that we have going on. We have um, really lots of uh, exciting um, volunteer activity going on in Chicago Audubon Society. And there are a number of people on this call that are going to talk about some different projects that we are working on. Um, and, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of people who aren't here who are working hard on behalf of Chicago Audubon um, 
and we're going to try to just talk about a few uh, projects that we thought you would be interested in and that you thought you, we, you probably haven't heard about yet. So um, I want to just start by plugging our native plant sale because that is still going on now. So if you um, are a gardener and you would like to plant some native plants, we've got, you can order up until April 15th. So you got about another week to order. And then you pick up the plants at North Park Village Nature Center on May 22nd. And um, that plant sale is really, um, is really going really well. And I will put in the chat the, the link to that if you're, if you're interested. Um, we still have plenty of plants left. Uh, so, um, and uh, Nancy uh, Bratt and a, another, a small group of volunteers has been working on that project and they've done a great job with publicizing and getting lots of people to our plants this year, which is great. And if you take a look at the website, uh, you will see, you know, how different birds and other kinds of pollinators will use those plants if you want to use that to base your selection on. Um, okay. Uh, what we're, the main thing we wanna talk about today are three projects that we're embarking on that all have um, a community aspect and a bird habitat aspect. And they're all kind of in order time-wise. So um, we'll be doing a little fundraising for each project. And uh, you know we've found donors who will provide match for some of the projects. And so uh, we're really excited that we'll be We'll be able to really be influencing habitat in uh, three different parts of our of our region. So the first person who's going to talk about the project um, and this project is accept we're accepting funds for it right now. Uh, I'm going to also post that um, link as soon as I stop talking here. Uh, and that's a hummingbird garden that we're going to be doing in uh, Washington Park. And so I'm going to turn it over to Jackie Smith to describe that project a little bit. Jackie's a new board member and she's also a steward at Washington Park and she's involved with the Hummingbird Garden Project. Well, hello everyone. And um, just to begin, um, I had casually mentioned to my granddaughter over a year ago that, um, you know, I'd watched the incident in, in Central Park about the birder and I said, oh, I can bird. I, you know, I, I think I'm gonna do that because I, I just recently retired um, from the University of Chicago, I'm a nurse, and I retired, and I says, oh, I can do this, and so she sent me this information, and so Judy was talking about, they were trying to figure out how to become, you know, more diverse or whatever, but it went across my granddaughter's desk, who said, Nana, you get to bird, here's, here's this welcome to birding from the Chicago Audubon Society, and so I joined, became a BIPOC birder, and discovered Washington Park. And, and I worked across the street from Washington Park, but I'd never really been in it, okay? So I just fell in love with the park itself and the lagoons and just, it was wonderful. And then fell in love with birding. So, um, so it's exciting to be a part of the park district, you know, be a volunteer. I was approached by Lucy and, she, and we talked about it and I said, this is, this is kind of what I want to do. And so therefore working with the park district, having a partner like the uh, Audubon Society, uh, it was just, you know, this is, this is going to be wonderful. And then to all of a sudden have someone show an interest in the park saying, hey, what do you think about a hummingbird garden? You know, and everybody was very excited. Um, I have not seen any hummingbirds at Washington Park. I've seen them at Jackson Park, but I haven't seen them there. So just, it was just very exciting meeting with a group of people, figuring out where it might go. And um, so I'm, I'm very excited about the prospect of making this beautiful park um, just even more spectacular, you know, and involving the community, uh, inviting them in. <clears throat> And establishing some partnerships in the in the neighborhood. So, like um, Judy said, we do have a donor um, who will match. Um, I guess he donated three thousand dollars, and then we're gonna he would like to match that, which would cover uh, the cost of planting um, 
things that would enhance a hummingbird um, habitat. So um, just look forward to um, um, getting this information out to everyone soon. I know Judy's working on a flyer, so we should be able to get that out to people soon. And uh, just look forward to it. And with the planning coming up this spring, <clears throat> we probably have some plants, you know, in the fall. And then by next year, you know, the um, habitat should be like in full bloom and we'll see what happens. Thanks, Jackie. Um, yeah, and one thing I'm excited about is that the park district has said this is their first hummingbird garden. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can demonstrate that it's successful, they'll probably do them elsewhere. So, yeah. um, you know, hopefully we can look forward to a number of hummingbird gardens. It just seems like such a great way to engage people with birds. Uh, so if you're interested I, in the chat, I put a, a link to a little description of the project and a place where you can make a donation or share with a friend that you think might want to support, uh, support this project. And we are sort of excited about these projects because people can really just go and, uh, and they can make a donation and they can really go and see their money at work, um, which is, which is uh, pretty exciting. Also, we, you know, we've got a connection with the school right across the way. They're going to be very, uh, very involved. They've come out for some bird walks, which actually Woody has been a part of leading those bird walks. Uh, and uh, that school is going to be involved with the Hummingbird Garden as well. So. Okay, so then the next project, moving through the seasons, this is our spring, uh, our spring project. So then uh, moving through the seasons, we've got uh, summer and fall, uh, where we'll be probably raising some funds for uh, a project that we're doing at River Park. And uh, so Rod Mansour is here, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that project. Uh, he's been very involved with, with uh, the team working on that from the beginning and um, I just also want to say that Mark Colossa uh, is doing uh, some of the bird monitoring. We have a very active bird monitoring effort at that park, and Mark is one of the bird monitors, uh, as is Rod. So take it away. Thanks, Judy. Um, so River Park is unique. It's in Albany Park. A little part of it's in Lincoln Square, I believe. It's right next to North Park University. Um, but uh, the most important feature is uh, it's where the confluence is between North Branch of the Chicago River and the North Shore Channel. So uh, the Army Corps of Engineers decided uh, a couple of years ago to redo both banks. And it's a unique park because they have a new river lab there now uh, that's staffed by Chicago Parks that uh, helps kids learn about the river from birds to the fish and canoeing. And they have a nice little uh, canoe um, ramp there that's uh, accessible uh, to everyone in the community. It also has a soccer field and a traditional park and a field house and tennis courts. What we started noticing is that um, I'm part of uh, the river pack for that park. Um, after, after a while, the birds weren't returning, especially the black crowned night herons, uh, which I discovered were endangered in Illinois. Um, and uh, we started just anecdotally looking at uh, birds at the river, and uh, there weren't, there wasn't as much activity. So, with Judy's help, we became bird scientists. I think there's some background. <laughs> um, um, we became bird scientists and she taught us how to do a bird study. We finished fall migration looking at Ronin and River. And I think there's also 529 Park that they're comparing it with. Um, but uh, uh, we're also doing spring migration. And what is really important about both of these is we at least figure out what birds aren't at River Park that we'd like uh, to return. Um, and uh, the parks have been very helpful with uh, the ecologist, Lauren, who's uh, we've walked through and she we've met with and uh, we made some asks and she delivered widening the path. Um, they uh, did a controlled burn there that really got rid of some of the invasives there. A lot of the trees that 
the Army Corps contracted out to be planted died along the bank. Um, I, I don't think that's uh, a blame of the contractor, Army Corps, more uh, perhaps climate change or the heat or just them not sticking, but for all the oak trees that they planted along the bank um, had passed. So they're going to replant them. But she created a little space at the entry for us. But Judy, you know, thinks large <laughs> and said, why don't we do the whole you know, why don't we look at parts that we can focus in and, and drive people to and maybe drive the birds towards one end and people like to, uh, as uh, I learned from Judy, create desire trails through the natural area. So how can we uh, um, enhance that? So I think uh, a lot of folks have been helping not only with bird watching, but also planning so we're looking to you know officially start when army corps leaves which is september but lauren's been really nice and kind of allowing us to start planting there's someone designing how or how will it'll look um with u.s forest service i believe you got an intern or someone uh, judy can explain more uh your contact there um, but we look to start getting people to help us plant i think the parks wants to purchase uh, through their contractor, uh, the plants there, but we're really excited to get this park, um, the natural area back and uh, the birds back uh, into that park. Uh, it's been interesting to see how many birds are in Ronin and how little are in River. And it's just, and if no one's familiar with River Park or Albany Park, um, if you know uh, Galter or North Shore, it's Swedish Hospital. It's right there off of Foster, um, way up north um, uh, and uh, between Argyle. But uh, Ronan is out there between Lawrence and Argyle, if you know where Argyle is. Um, so we look forward to uh, getting that started. Um, I think after this spring migration, I think, we're, are we still looking for volunteers, Judy? Or are we good? Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, I think we're always, you know, we're always looking for volunteers for sure. Yeah, both monitoring and also just helping us plan. And then, you know, we'll be advertising when we finally start doing the planting. So we'll, we'll need people on those days as well. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks, Rod. And, you know, one of the things that I find really exciting about this project is that I think a lot of us have watched um, them clear the banks and then replant with mostly a lot of herbaceous plants. And then the birds lose a lot of habitat that way, even though, you know, what they're clearing is invasive, but it is like, a, it's good habitat from the standpoint that the birds can hide in it. Um, and so I think we're excited to be working uh, with the park district to try to bring some woody materials back to this park. And I also want to mention that Alan um, has been a key part of this project as well. So, um, okay. Yeah, and so that's another super exciting project that I think will really demonstrate um, how we can put park district along, uh, how we can put bird habitat along the river, which is such an important um, location for birds. Okay, and then one final one as we progress even further through the seasons and we get to uh, next year, uh, Alex Lamberg, who is one of our board members, is going to talk a little bit about the Camp Pine project. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Alex, as Judy said, and I've been involved with uh, our Camp Pine project for about three years now. For folks that aren't familiar, Camp Pine is uh, located along the Des Plaines River in Glenview. And if you haven't been up there, I, I highly recommend it. It's, a, it's an awesome site. Uh, it's got uh, a lot of different habitats to check out. Uh, the Des Plaines River Trail runs right through the middle of it. Um, so it's got some really great walking paths, awesome for birding because you have wooded area. You also have a really nice meadow um, that offers uh, some really good birding if you're looking for birds that are, are found in more you know, like shrubby habitats. So again, great site to go check out, not just for the, the birding and the outdoor setting, but it's also got a, a really uh, interesting history. 
um, Camp Pine kind of gets its name from the fact that it, it hosted uh, uh, a camp there for a long time that served a number of purposes. Uh, it, it was a site that hosted folks working for the Civilian Conservation Corps. Um, it was a Girl Scout camp. It actually held uh, German uh, POWs during World War II. So uh, again, really fantastic, uh, interesting history to go along with the, uh, the uh, really fantastic natural setting. So one thing we've been focusing on, uh, like a lot of restoration sites uh, for the past three years is, is, is getting rid of invasive species. And uh, just recently, our, our site steward, Ken, has, has kind of declared victory. Um, we've cleared a, 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 good a good section of the, the wooded area of, of buckthorn and some other in, invasive species, reseeded it with uh, um, native herbaceous plants and found located and caged uh, a large number of, of native trees. Um, we've done some controlled burns in the, in the meadow or prairie area and have really got a good, uh, I think a good handle on that area as well. So now we've kind of shifted our focus and, and this kind of ties into um, what was being discussed about River Park as well. We've kind of shifted our focus to the area along the river, um, clearing out, spending the last couple of work days, clearing out uh, some of the invasive plants, mainly buckthorn along the river. Um, and now the goal is to actually go in and plant some, some native shrubs uh, along that riverbank. And, and the main reason for this is the, the, the river uh, at Camp Pine is, uh, is situated right along the, the parking lot. And one thing that uh, myself and our site steward Ken have, have really talked about over the last couple of years is providing some area that is uh, accessible for, for people that might be uh, of limited mobility. So having this location right off the parking lot um, but right now is kind of underutilized. Um, now that we've cleared the, uh, uh, a lot of the invasive plants away from there, uh, a lot of the, the, the remaining area is, is uh, just grass right now. Um, so there's not a lot of existing native plants that can kind of come up in its place. So we've secured a small grant from the Friends of the Forest Preserves and Lindsay, who is on this call as well, um, also secured some funding from ComEd so we're going to put that funding towards uh, actually growing some native shrubs through uh, likely Possibility Place. For those who are familiar with um, uh, Possibility Place Nursery, uh, our site steward Ken is going to be collecting seeds from different uh, native shrubs over the course of uh, this next uh, summer and fall. Uh, and then the idea is to send them off to Possibility Place. They can actually grow these plants for us. Uh, and then we'll plant those uh, along the, the cleared section of the, the Displains River and hopefully create some really good habitat that's also super accessible from the, the, the parking lot. Um, the, I think one of the things that is uh, kind of open to the group or one thing we might need help with is uh, potentially putting a little bit more funding towards um, some shrubs. We have a really, really large section of, of river that we would like to plant, and we're not totally sure yet if the, the funding that we have secured is going to kind of cover that entire area. So I think, you know, looking towards uh, the end of this year, and as Judy mentioned, into kind of the winter and spring of 2023, that could potentially be something that, that, that folks can get involved with, not only from a a funding standpoint, but if you'd like to come out and volunteer and help with some of those plantings, um, that's an option as well. And I will put my email in the chat. So if folks are interested in coming out and either touring Camp Pine or volunteering, um, you can contact me because I actually uh, coordinate all of our volunteer uh, work days as well. Okay, thanks, Alex. And we're going to hear from one more person here, uh, and that's Sarah Brotherton. She's been the person who's been doing our our um, action alerts about different various uh, advocacy items that we we have, and I'm going to put a couple of them in the chat while she talks a little bit about them. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, there's a couple that have just come out this month. It's already active for action alerts. Um, we have one out on the South Shore Nature Sanctuary, which is being considered to be kind of um, 
part of the combined golf courses of Jackson Park and uh, South Shore golf courses, um, which of course would take away a beautiful habitat we have currently as part of the park district. And another one we have is on the um, three proposed sites for the Chicago Casino, um, asking that people um, ask that whoever develops whatever is gonna happen to consider bird friendly design since it's right along the, any of the sites seem to be right along the river or close to the lake. Um, and we've had in the past uh, an action alert about Belbo Prairie out in Rockford. Um, these go out on the um, CAS's um, homepage, but they're also out on social media. So please um, be on the alert for the action alerts and um, take part as you see fit and what interests you. Thank you. So I just want to mention, uh, I just maybe two more minutes here, if you could uh, indulge me. I want to mention Jessica Johnson, one of our board members, she sends out our emails every month. And so hopefully you're on our email list. If you're not, just go to our web page, go to the bottom and put your name in. Um, and the action alerts come out uh, with the emails and also on our social media. Um, uh, other board members I just uh, want to mention are Sunshine, uh, Sunshine Solida Cahill, who is um, just came back to Chicago. We're really happy to have uh, have them back in Chicago here. That's great. And um, Jeff Sanders uh, and Annette Prince, who is our secretary and who's also on the call. So um, we thank all of them and all the other board members for their service. And finally, I just really want to mention our communications team. So Anne uh, Hetzel-Gunkel is a new board member. She's uh, stepped in for Judy Chesky, who we lost this year. And um, we, Judy really, really upped our communications. Um, you know, just she created our website. She got us going on all a lot of different social media. And so now you can follow us on, I think, six different social media. I counted them. So uh, there's like lots of places that we're, we're active now. And there's a lot of people very active on the communication team. And Anne is the person who coordinates uh, all of that. So we're really uh, grateful for her work. And um, I just also want to, you know, if you really would like to have three minutes of birdie sunshine. I'm gonna put the link to the Chicago bird report in the uh, chat. And those are um, some things that Woody does. And we push those out on our social media uh, as long as, as well as our emails. So they're really fun videos. Uh, and we've really been enjoying seeing what he comes up with um, just reporting on different birds that are around the Chicago area. They're really terrific. So, um, I think that is, uh, that's, that's about it. Um, you know, there's a lot more that we do. You know, if you get our emails, you'll see um, that there's a lot going on. And we wanna really, again, really welcome our board members and thank you for joining us. We're looking forward to a really uh, good year this year. And um, yeah, and so I think it's, it being 8.02 uh, <laughs> that 